I fight them all. Men, women, children, people. It doesn't matter. In the broadcast, we have the button that can turn down our laughter. Like Burley Senior is making the international slit throat sign in the corner. I am stoked for this fight. Oh, this shit! In the corner, the other. That's it. Over. The fight is over. Charles Crazy Horse Bennett jumping on the cage. Not sure what he was going to do. I think he was going to attempt some kind of kickoff. Look at the hand speed of these two going at it. And it is over. A knockout by Charles Crazy Horse Bennett as he's been training cardio. And he was prepared. Felony Charles Bennett. Without a shadow of a doubt, one of the craziest fighters to ever compete in MMA. A man blessed with raw power from the gods and athleticism that us mere mortals could only dream of. But also a man cursed with addiction problems, mental health issues and a hatred of training. In an alternate universe, Charles Bennett could have been a UFC legend fighting the greatest the sport has to offer and competing for titles. Instead, Charles Crazy Horse Bennett goes down in history as an underground cult hero, loved by the hardcore fans and famous for his wild antics, lengthy criminal record and exciting fighting style. To some people, Charles Bennett's career is a story of wasted potential, but that's too simplistic of a narrative for someone as complicated as Crazy Horse. This video tells the story of the life, fights and crimes of Charles Crazy Horse Bennett, the wildest fighter in the history of mixed martial arts. Charles Bennett was dealt a very bad hand in childhood and had the odds stacked against him from the moment he was born. He was born in Gainesville, Florida as one of 11 children all 11 of them having different fathers. Charles grew up in a broken home with both his mother and father struggling with addiction to crack cocaine and going in and out of prison throughout his childhood. Charles had been extremely unlucky to be born into such a chaotic and unstable environment, but he'd also been blessed with freakish athleticism that he soon began utilizing for his high school football team, where he dominated at running back, linebacker, and even defensive line despite being just 5 feet 5 inches tall. His power was just that explosive. Unfortunately, despite his natural physical gifts, Charles struggled to overcome the toxic environment he was raised in and he began dealing drugs at an early age. Because of his drug dealing and erratic behaviour, Charles was soon kicked off the school football team in his sophomore year and his life began to spiral downwards rapidly. A year later, his dad kicked him out of the family home and Charles dropped out of high school to further immerse himself into the world of dealing narcotics to feed his own habit. Charles was not even 18 years old yet, but he was stuck firmly in the destructive cycle of selling drugs to satisfy his own drug addiction and this landed him repeatedly in jail with the mugshots to prove it. He was so young and yet Charles just seemed destined for a life dominated by addiction and prison sentences. And perhaps that's how this story would have gone had he not spotted an advert for an MMA gym in a newspaper one day and decided on a whim to go and sign up for some training sessions. From the moment he walked into the gym, the coaches fell in love with his rare combination of elite speed and strength. As a veteran of both street and jail fights, with natural gifts that you just cannot teach, it seemed like Charles had accidentally stumbled into his calling in life and his one chance to break out of the shackles his upbringing had placed on him. Charles was never one to shy away from fast money and before long he made his MMA debut which he would actually end up losing. He bounced back shortly after in his second fight with a knockout via slam 
which would become a bit of a trademark in his career. But then in just his third fight, he lost again, and this time by submission due to strikes. Charles had all the natural gifts needed for MMA, but he lacked any dedication to training and seemed to be more focused on his career in the streets than his career in the cage. This lack of dedication to his training was highlighted in his sixth fight, where he lost after collapsing in the second round due to exhaustion. To not have the cardio to be able to fight for two rounds was a damning indictment of Charles's lack of commitment to training and his over-reliance on his natural God-given power to overcome his deficiencies. Charles felt like he was so good that training was just a waste of time that could be better spent selling narcotics and earning money. Perhaps losing in a way as embarrassing as being too tired to keep fighting sparked Charles to dedicate himself just a little bit more because with his record at three wins, three losses, he went on the best run of his career and won nine of his next 10 fights, albeit most of them coming against non-wiki page warriors. But he was finally starting to deliver on the talent he'd flashed in the gym. Well, when he actually turned up to the gym anyway. At some point during this win streak, Charles decided to stop selling drugs and focus more on MMA out of a desire to avoid going back to jail and missing out on seeing his newborn son grow up but his addiction troubles meant that he'd be in and out of jail for a variety of different charges over the coming years, and his legal issues combined with his erratic nature led to him earning the nicknames of Crazy Horse and Felony over the course of his career. Despite his continued legal issues, Charles' run of 9 wins in 10 fights, combined with his wild antics, meant that he had ended up on the radar of the world's second biggest MMA promotion at the time in Pride. Despite a loss in his previous fight, Charles would go on to make his Pride debut against MMA legend Takanori Gomi in Japan. And this is where I'm hoping someone in the comments can help me out, because how on earth did someone with a criminal record longer than a Harry Potter novel manage to get into Japan? Either the Yakuza pulled some strings, or he just straight up lied about his criminal record, but it doesn't matter, because Crazy Horse somehow made it through immigration and was ready to put the world on notice. But sadly, the biggest opportunity of Crazy Horse's career would end up exposing the gaping holes in his game as he lost via submission in the first round. Charles' lack of dedication to training meant his wrestling and jiu-jitsu skills were abysmal, as these skills require a lot more time in the gym versus striking which came more naturally to Charles. In his career, Charles would get choked out so many times you'd think it was a fetish of his. For every electric knockout he produced, there would be an extremely frustrating submission loss just around the corner. For every winning streak he put together, there would be a terrible run of losses following closely behind. For every major win against legitimate opposition, like when Charles knocked out former Strikeforce champion KJ Noons, he would then go on to take a loss to someone who doesn't even have a Wikipedia page shortly after. He was always capable of moments of magic, such as probably my favourite MMA highlight of all time, when Charles picked up his opponent, posed for the camera, and then absolutely slammed his opponent into the octagon fence. But the amount of experience in the cage Charles was racking up didn't seem to matter, because he wasn't interested in following it up by getting better in the gym and putting in the hard work needed to be a champion. And when he actually was in the gym putting in work, it wasn't always productive work. Like in 2011, when Charles had a disagreement with a training partner that ended up causing a fight in which Charles was knocked out by the training partner. Surprisingly, Charles took the mature decision to de-escalate the situation by getting changed and leaving the gym. But 15 minutes later, he re-escalated the situation with a vengeance by coming back to the gym armed with a piece of steel that he used to attack the gym partner in question. For this assault, Charles was arrested and hit with a charge of aggravated battery. Charles was equal parts exciting and frustrating, but always, and I mean always, entertaining. If you're watching this video, then you've probably watched my Lee Murray documentary. If you haven't watched that video, then I think you should, but only after finishing this one. Much like Lee Murray, the most famous fight of Charles Bennett's career didn't come inside the cage, and it involved knocking out a UFC legend in an incident that sparked beef and resentment that simmered for years and years after the altercation took place. This is the story of when MMA legend Vandalay Silva encountered Crazy Horse Charles Bennett. The date is December 31st, 2005, 
and Charles Bennett is somehow back in Japan and back fighting for pride despite having a criminal record that makes John Jones look like an upstanding citizen. Not only has Charles Bennett got into Japan, he's gone and done the unthinkable and won a fight via submission for just the second time in his career of 30 fights. But Charles isn't content with just one fight tonight and he heads back to the changing room in a cocky and celebratory mood. Charles' opponent on the night was Ken Kaneko, a fighter making his debut who had been assigned the legendary shooter box team including Vandalay Silva as his corner man for the night. The same shooter box team that had been assigned to share a dressing room with Charles Bennett. Charles has never been shy about celebrating a win before and tonight is no different. And before long he's back in the changing room with the shooter box team and begins taunting and talking trash to guys such as MMA legend Vandalay Silva and shooter box jiu-jitsu coach Cristiano Marcelo. Unbelievably, even though this takes place all the way back in 2005, the incident is captured on camera as Charles and Marcelo talk back and forth before Charles snaps and starts wildly throwing punches at Marcelo. The pair quickly end up on the ground and Marcelo attempts to put his jiu-jitsu prowess to use as Charles rains down punches and tries one of his trademark slams. Eventually Marcelo gets Charles into a triangle submission choke and puts Crazy Horse to sleep on the dressing room floor. It's a humiliating moment for Charles and we already know he's not really the kind of guy to just suck it up and take the high road. When Charles wakes up, he's confronted by an angry Vandalay Silva who begins pushing him out of the dressing room and shouting at him to leave. Without warning, Charles Bennett turns around and sucker punches Vandalay, knocking him unconscious onto the floor. A 5 foot 5 street fighter with a pretty bad MMA record had just knocked out the middleweight king of pride cold onto the floor of the changing room. Charles was a relatively well known MMA fighter for his mixed record but this KO sent his notoriety and popularity to another level. As news of the KO began to spread via Charles bragging and mocking Vandalay, it sent shockwaves around the MMA community and cemented Charles as the wild card of mixed martial arts. Although I must point out that despite getting knocked out and having a concussion, Vandalay Silva would decide to still go on and fight that same night and he came away with a victory, showing just how great he really was, even if fighting the same night as you already got knocked out is a pretty stupid idea. In the aftermath of the knockout, Vandalay would deny for years that it had ever happened, but witnesses swore that it had happened, and over time Vandalay's stance has softened and he's admitted that Crazy Horse had caught him flush on the chin and knocked him out cold with a sucker punch. But this beef didn't just end after that night in Japan. Charles Bennett was keen to milk it for all he could, and he continued taunting Vandalay, or Candylay as he liked to call him, non-stop for years and years. It wasn't like Charles had much to brag about, as his MMA record continued to get worse and worse over the years until eventually he had more losses on his record than wins. Any dreams of fighting in the UFC and winning titles had seemingly evaporated, but he'd always have his legendary KO over Vandalay Silva to hold on to as he made his rounds through the lower tiers of MMA promotions. However, fate would bring these two foes together again one day when Ryzen signed Charles Bennett and matched him up against a Vandalay Silva protege in kickboxing world champion Minoru Kimura, who would be making his MMA debut with Vandalay Silva in his corner. This fight with Kimura was Charles Bennett at his very, very best. His spin around slam onto the cage fence was the highlight of his career. His KO on Vandalay Silva was the biggest moment of his career and this fight with Kimura was the best performance of his career. From the outset, Charles was quick to taunt Vandalay about the knockout and he kept chirping at Vandalay even as the referee gave his final instructions and the fight was seconds away from starting. Vandalay's protege Kimura seemed unsure what to make of the absolute madman he was facing up against as Charles kept talking on and on and on without a care in the world. Eventually the fight began, Kimura charged at Charles and BANG! Charles dropped Kimura hard with the very first punch and before anyone even knew what was happening the fight was over and Charles was on an absolute rampage to rub it in Vandalay's face with backflips, taunts and whatever the hell this was. Before cutting an absolutely legendary promo. The celebration is more work than the fight. For the record, you know what happened in 2005. Oh my. That's why you're still salty. That's why you still want to try to get some with this. But you can't get none with this unless you put it on contract. 
we put it on contract, then you can get some. And other than that, every time your big steroid head ass see me, I'm a and I run fast. We never got to see Charles Bennett fulfill his potential in mixed martial arts for a variety of reasons, but this was the fight where we got a true glimpse of what could have been. All of the best parts of Crazy Horse coming together, the dynamite power, the crazy attitude, the over-the-top celebrations and the electric personality all fusing together to produce a truly magic performance. A kickboxing world champion absolutely starched in just seven seconds. It's unbelievable. A furious Vandalay Silva would later confront Charles in the lobby of their hotel, but that wouldn't stop the knight from belonging to felony Charles Bennett, who had zero interest in fighting Vandalay unless he was getting paid. Sadly, however, this night of triumph would be followed by a sharp and vicious downturn in Charles' career as he exposed the harsh realities of life for fighters who spend their life chasing riches and glory, but ultimately come up short of their dreams. After suffering the 22nd defeat of his professional career, Charles Crazy Horse Bennett had a startling realization it had taken him over 48 fights and over a decade of his career, but it finally hit Charles that maybe, just maybe, it would be a good idea to, you know, actually train and start taking fighting seriously. Charles had renewed ambitions of becoming an MMA legend, fueled by a desire to give his kids a better life growing up than his parents had been able to provide him. He began training every day at a gym in Albuquerque and started to put in the most work of his entire career in the gym, Unfortunately, it would not pay off. His ambitions of superstardom failed to materialize, and it seemed that all the years he'd spent not improving meant he'd been lapped by the competition and his ceiling as a fighter was now capped. The losses became slightly more frequent as the years rolled by, and eventually his record showed more losses than wins. His knockout win over Minura Kimura would put his record back to an even 30 wins and 30 defeats but the decline in his fortunes after this fight was both dramatic and sad. His win over Kimura came way back in 2016, and it would prove to be almost certainly the last win of his fighting career. He has managed to lose a shocking 16 fights in a row, with a whole bunch of these losses coming against non-wiki page warriors for increasingly small time promotions that nobody has ever heard of, like Kunlun Fight in China and Tanko Fighting Championship in the UK. The bright lights of the UFC will almost certainly never shine on felony Charles Bennett. The fight game keeps begging him to retire, with loss after loss after loss, but Charles keeps coming back for more. And can you really blame him? Fighting has been this guy's life, his saving grace, and his chance to break the destructive cycle his terrible upbringing got him stuck in. But it's still tough to see him keep losing, and in increasingly worse fashion. His name and cult hero status holds enough weight that despite the fact he's on such a terrible losing streak, he still gets offered the chance to headline fight cards for promotions such as Bare Knuckle FC or Jorge Masvidal's Gamebred FC. An opportunity to cash a much needed check, but the days of Charles being a competitive or dangerous opponent have been consigned to the history books. He just can't hang anymore. There is no sadder sight in sport than a fighter whose time has passed, but they just can't bring themselves to hang up the gloves. And that is where Charles Bennett finds himself. For all that Charles has managed to achieve in life, after starting at the very bottom, he has almost nothing to show for it. On a podcast with UFC legend Chael Sonnen recorded in 2018, Charles admitted that he had less than $200 to his name, and he was so broke that he couldn't afford to pay gym dues. So for years, his training had just been him working out alone at home. Chael Sonnen offered to pay for Charles' gym dues on the condition that he stop smoking weed, but Charles refused, such is the grip that the drug has on him and the problems he's facing. In fact, Charles has been so cash-strapped that he couldn't afford medical insurance and had to fight with no insurance. These fights resulted in injuries that he then couldn't afford to get treated. At one stage, he was trying to crowdfund money for surgery he needed to stave off a potentially fatal infection. It's a really tragic situation for a guy who's given the fans so much entertainment over his career. But with the addiction and mental problems that have plagued him throughout his life, 
I'm unsure that any amount of money Charles could have earned would have been enough to avoid him ending up in a situation like this. If you want to get some insight into the current state of Charles Bennett, he streams occasionally on his YouTube channel, with his streams generally consisting of him sitting in his car, getting high, and incoherently rambling to the camera about whatever topics the chat feed to him. To his credit, he is still involved in his children's lives and tries to be a better influence on them than his parents were to him, but it's clear that he is still fighting the same demons he's been fighting since childhood. With Charles's last fight being in October of last year and it now being August 2022, I'm personally hoping that he's either decided to hang up the gloves and call it a day or promotions have finally stopped offering him fights because there really is no need for him to take further punishment. But it does beg the question of what exactly is Charles going to do to earn money for the rest of his life? Whatever he chooses, I just hope it's something that keeps him on the straight and narrow and out of prison. The story of Charles Bennett is a difficult one to summarize. On the one hand, he's a guy who seemed destined to spend his life in and out of prison while hopelessly battling addiction problems. Instead, he forged a fighting career that lasted over two decades and took him all over the world to fight in countries like Japan, China, Australia, Mexico and the UK. Guys who come from Charles' situation aren't supposed to see the world, and yet he overcame the odds and achieved things that many fighters will only ever dream of. Charles himself said it best when he said, The way I see it, I'm black, I'm poor, and I'm taking a trip to Osaka and Tokyo. I did pretty good. On the other hand, it's impossible not to wonder how far Charles might have gone in MMA if he'd been able to overcome his battles with addiction, the legal system, and his mental issues. Charles had the natural gifts to make coaches' jaws drop, but he lacked in just about every other possible area needed to succeed in mixed martial arts. To be over a decade into your career before you decide to start training properly is so negligent it's just painful to think about. Charles's problems robbed himself and his fans of getting to see him at his peak and it sucks to think about. While Charles himself says that he has no regrets about his life, it's sad to think that after giving the prime years of his life to such a brutal sport, the only things he will take away as his career fades are the memories and notoriety he created over the course of 78 total fights. At 42 years old, Charles still has a lot of time left in his life, and I just sincerely hope that he is able to find happiness and stability in whatever direction he decides to take his life. He has mentioned in interviews, and it's clear from his live streams, that his kids mean so much to him, and I hope that they motivate him to try and better himself and to be the best possible father he can be, and give them the kind of childhood that he needed when he was growing up. Charles Bennett didn't reach the highest heights of the game, but he will go down in history as one of the most memorable fighters to never fight in the UFC, with highlights that will stand the test of time. He is the quintessential cult hero of mixed martial arts. The end. If you got this far, thank you so much for watching, and please smash the like button if you enjoyed the video, as it massively helps the channel. Subscribe for more interesting sports documentaries just like this one, and feel free to leave feedback and video suggestions in the comments below. I've been Narera, and I'll see you in the next one.